Asalaamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Beit al Um It's been a long time since we have uh, done a show like this. Uh, I just w- wish you guys, inshallah, are doing all well under the current circumstances. I hope you guys are staying safe. My prayers are with you and your family members, especially um, in this uh, extremely diff- difficult time with this uh, whole COVID situation. I know some of us have lost some friends and family, so um, yeah, I'd send my, uh, my prayers and condolences to you. So without further ado, inshallah, I want to come to uh, the whole um, topic of discussion, which essentially is a, a review uh, on, the, on the movie, the upcoming movie, uh, The Lady of Heaven. Uh, the Lady of Heaven is a movie that's come into production. Uh, it's been in production actually for almost a year and a half. Um, I understand that it was, ori- it was originally done um, and due to some internal complications, they stopped recording and they had to remake the movie. So uh, what's this hype all about? Uh, Brother uh, Matthew, what's your thought about this movie? What do you know about it? How it's brought to your attention? Um, what do you think? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, well, the little bit that I do know about it, I just started seeing this uh, pop up on my Facebook feed like crazy over the past probably week. And from what I understand, yeah, essentially it's a small chronicling of the life of Fatima al-Zahra, Salam al-Aleha, up to uh, the period and specifically focusing on the period of after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam left this physical plane of existence. Um, as far as why it's so controversial and my thoughts on the movie um, and my understanding of it is it's just that it's uh, historical events that are chronicled through sources that one side may deem more valid than other sides. And the fact that one man's history might not be agreed on, especially with something as controversial and sensitive as religion. Um, you know, this is obviously going to cause some controversy amongst uh, people. And uh, I guess the uh, less mature of them, the more controversy there shall be. So that's kind of my understanding of what's going on with everything that's really gotten hot over the last week or so. Absolutely beautiful, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. So, yeah, I mean, that is the hype. Essentially, the hypes are based on um, a trailer which has been released. Um, I understand there's a certain a release date. It may well be delayed into the later months as well. Uh, there's not too much information in terms of what platform it will be released on. Some people say it will be released on Netflix. Some people say it will be released on Amazon Prime. Um, some are even saying it's going to be released in the cinema. But one thing which we do know for certain, ultimately, it's really one organization who are behind it. Um, and Sheikh Yasser al-Habib, an individual who's, there's a lot of controversy uh, about him. There's a lot of people who, who don't necessarily agree with uh, his, uh, his methodology. Do you think, um, uh, Brother... Abu Ali, this is um, a reason why certain people are a bit reluctant to promote this movie uh, or even this trailer. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes, I believe uh, the stigma surrounding the organization, um, its history, um, its uh, alleged uh, uh, ties with (laughs) foreign governments or what have you, they they are um, causing a lot of reluctance in the wider Shia community. Um, my circle of friends, uh, we, we have a mixed bunch, and you know, there's some people who are really excited about it, and there are a lot of others uh, that are not um, because they're like, oh no, it's funded by X or Y, um, and therefore I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to support this, or I'm not going to you know pay any money towards it or whatever. You know. So, yeah, there's definitely some reluctance because of um, who is actually writing the story. Brother Kaleem, I want to I want to bring you into the panel now, inshallah, because I come from a Sunni background, essentially. I mean, how did this trailer come to your attention and what was your instant reaction to that trailer? Um, and do you know much about the, the, the controversy uh, surrounding this movie? And would this have been something which, uh, which would have put you off watching it? Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Uh, thank you for having me on your uh, on this uh, in this Zoom meeting. And um, so, uh, when I saw the trailer, mm. and I saw, you know, like um, you know, I saw, you know, began with like present day Iraq and ISIS and what they're doing. Mm. I know that what these people are following mm. is something that they have read. 
mm. something that's in their books. The problem I have is, is that I was always told, right? Like me, I come from a Sunni background mm. and coming from a Sunni background, I have, well, well, I'm actually initially, like I'm a convert. When I came to Islam, I was taught nothing, but I was just taught Sunni Islam, right? So when I, um, when I tried to go deep into all of this, I was told, don't go so much deep into this, right? Don't, don't actually inquire and don't, you know, um, this is not something that you want to get into. But once I started reading, right, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm reading all this. And why are these things that are hidden from us? It's the Sunni world have made, respectively, have made the Khulafa Rashidin infallible. That's the honest truth. Like they have made, like even when my son used to go to an Islamic school, right, they would talk about Abu Bakr, the merits of Abu Bakr and Omar and Osman again and again and again. And when it would come to, you know, time to talk about Imam, Sayyidina Imam Ali, salam, they would really just, it was like just very vague, like very, it wasn't really emphasized on. It was talk, it was like, Sun, the Sunni world have made these four khulafa infallible. You know how they always say, oh, you know, you've made the, you know, these 12 imams infallible and, you know, you shouldn't do that. But they've actually done that to the khulafa rashidin, but they've done it without speaking about it. Basically, this whole thing is like the red and the blue pill. If you want to, uh, if you want to accept that narration, that everything is perfect and they all loved each other, and Karbala was just a matter of ishtihad, then you take the blue pill. You go to sleep and you wake up and everything's okay. But if you take the red pill, it's like the matrix. You'll see how far the rabbit hole goes, right? So, <laughs> so the thing is, is that um, I was told that stay away. I was told, like, we've been taught certain things our whole entire lives, right? As Sunni Muslims, as a, even a person that's coming from a revert background. All of them are equal. Where you, the family is mentioned, you got to mention the Sahaba, right? You cannot just mention the family by itself. You cannot talk about, you know, the first Khalifa is Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq, where they don't understand that there is differences of opinion. There were people at the time of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that when he went to the next realm, that didn't even accept Abu Bakr as the Khalifa. There are some narrations that I've read that it wasn't just um, Imam Ali that didn't give bath to him, but there were Sahaba there too that actually didn't give bath to him. Sometimes I wonder about Hazrat Bilal. I think, you know, they say Hazrat Bilal left Medina. Why did he leave Medina? They're saying he didn't come back until he saw Prophet ﷺ in a dream, right? So all of all of this stuff, like when I read what happened to Hazrat Fatima, when I read about like, okay, her asking for Faddaq, right? When I read about, these things were actually hidden from me. These things were hidden from us, right? And so as I read about it, see, if you want to know the truth, you have to have an inquiring mind. It leads you to the truth. So for me, I'm like, okay, let me see what actually happened. Like, let me read about this. So then as I started inquiring, because the Sunni stop at one point, they say, oh, you know, it was like a very, like a istahadi, you know, it was like a very istahadi, like uh, masala. And it was, it was, it was not even really a big deal. And that history is just essentially his story. So when we put all of it together, right, you get a, like somewhat of a picture. Now you have to decide the whose story you're going to believe, right? You're going to believe this story. You're going to believe this story. You're going to believe that story. Now, I'm not going to say that this happened or that happened, but whatever happened, right, until at that time, right, that has led to what has happened in the world that's happening in the world right now. Um, thank you for that, brother um, uh, Kaleem. Extremely passionate. I'm sure you've got loads to say, um, but due to the limited time, we're going to have to move on. Um, brother Abu Ali, what do you think about, why a movie about Sayyidah Fatima Salamaniya? And why in English? I mean, what's your thoughts about this? Um, <clears throat> uh, movie, I'll answer the second question first. Um, why in English? Um, I, th I think there's a bigger audience and more um, intellectually aware audience, uh, you know, notwithstanding some of the uh, loonies that, you know, we deal with on a daily basis. Uh, uh, there's, there's a bigger market. There's a bigger uh, group of people who would appreciate this movie, um, that's one. And the other point is that there is safety in making the movie in English um, using Western um, or non-Muslim um, cast because, you know, they, they, they are not allied with any single denomination or sect of Islam. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's why I think English is the language 
with regards to your first question around, um, you know, whether there are other movies, there have been movies in the past, like The Message and then the Imam Ali movie and the Prophet Yusuf series. Um, but none of them have spoken about anything that is, you know, controversial in nature, if you will, um, or something that's actually purposely hidden from the public eye. Um, you know, they all talk about things that there is general consensus of some nature, you know, some wishy-washy form of consensus. But um, something like this, the story of Lady Fatima, um, um, I'm not sure if they're going to show her life or upbringing. I'm pretty sure they'll touch on bits and pieces of it. Um, but, you know, based on the trailer where, you know, which is sort of hinting towards her martyrdom, uh, those type of things never get discussed. Those type of things never get thought about. Uh, so I, I, th I think this will be a beautiful, beautiful movie um, if the trailer is something to form an opinion by. Excellent. Uh, Brother Matthew, did you want to add anything to that? Um, so I would say why English? Obviously, it's not just because of the wider and more intellectual audience per se, but also I'd like to touch on just the wider audience. I mean, we have Muslims. It's an international ummah. I mean, we have Arabs, we have Pakistanis, we have everybody. English is a language of business, and it's something that bridges the gap between all these uh, linguistic cultures. So there's going to be more people who are able to understand and take part in the knowledge or information that's being disseminated by this movie. Why Fatima Tassahra, Salaamu Alayha? Um, I also agree with, yeah, that's more, most important um, in the sense that the Imam Ali, alayhi salatu salam, uh, Hazrat Yusuf, alayhi salatu salam, you know, um, all the other personalities that are discussed, I mean, yeah, we could say the Omar movie could have been controversial, but they didn't want to bring that controversy up. So the one whom he, according to our school of thought and the Sunni traditions, oppressed Sayyidina Fatima, salam alayha, her story shows all the controversy and how it ensued, when it ensued, after the passing of her father, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ali. Sorry, so sorry, Matthew, bro, sorry, bro, very quickly. Um, how do you think non-Muslims will view this? I mean, they probably were not even aware that there is a, they probably just think this is just some, you know, Hollywood movie or something just about made up for some random woman. But f do you think people would could, could actually, relate to it could it be a good opportunity to make them understand that no this is actually a real person and this is who she was um, well of course the, not not just that the real person and who she was i mean absolutely if they want to see the human side of islam and this is something i've talked with you and other brothers about just even in our depiction of the enemies of al halbayt that he was of islam and let's say them by name and we do consider abu Bakr, omar uthman like the, the, what schism what division if we do fake paqiyya we're just liars anyway the sunnis know our opinions of them let's let's cut the crap pardon my french but so they'll, all, they'll know who she is this human being seeing that human side of islam that this is the human embodiment of goodness where is shortcomings are embodied by their enemies i mean we could all be omar we could all become an aisha we could all become an Uthman, god forbid but not only that they can also see through the chronicling of her life through what brother kaleem had said you know if abu Bakr was alive right now to see what his decision made yeah he should be would be and is crying tears of blood right now in this moment if he saw what happened so they can also see the difference between them even someone like alex jones for instance the sunni militia groups are a bunch of clowns compared to how the shiri conduct themselves in battle look at the difference between the rules of war we can see as people say oh it's controversial that nak said it. the root of terrorism is with those individuals he's not calling abu Bakr and omar terrorists per se we could disagree with the uh, issue of the door if they are per se but the fact of the matter is that through that schism through what's happened through the division of Sunni and Shi'i, through the difference of our narratives. We take what we get from Al-Halbayt, we get it through Sayyidah Fatima, the one who was oppressed in how we conduct ourselves in all aspects of life to compare to the oppressors and how their followers conduct themselves in their aspects of life and where the majority body of Sunnis 
aren't ISIS. They're not. They're, they're not all unhatched Salafi eggs, as my friend would say. They are, in fact, the goodness that they get from If we look at it, it's all embodied through Al-Hubayt, So through this video, I think non-Muslims, if they start digging in, hey, this is a very high production, this is a good soft da'wah, because it's not preaching to them, it's causing potentially us as Muslims to open our eyes in a controversial subject. Um... It'll be able to have them kind of really get a better look into the depth, of the differences, and the history behind Islam and what's made certain Muslims act a certain way as a par- opposed to other certain Muslims act a certain way. So, um, yeah, and absolutely, as you rightly said, Brother Matthew, a lot of people out there will be able to relate to the movie. and um, It could inspire them. You know, if they just look at the, the life of, say, the Fatima, you know, they could go out there, they could purchase books, you know, I'm sure there's probably a lot of non-Muslim people who probably watch this podcast as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it could, it could lead them to that inquiry where they can learn more about understanding the pure Islam um, as taught by the, the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, through his holy uh, family. Brother Ali, there's a question that I want to ask you in reference to um, the fatwas. There's a lot of fatwas being circulated around at the moment. Yes. Um, some of these fatwas are quite old, but they're being brought back again. And shared mm-hmm. amongst um, various social media platforms uh, through WhatsApp messages, through Twitter accounts, through YouTube comments, etc. Mm-hmm. What do you know about these fatwas, and um, what's your thoughts on it? First of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala bayt Muhammad al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. Like there is a lot of people, they're not even muqallidin of uh, Makarim Shirazi or some other scholars. Uh, they brought up his uh, fatwa from the year 2016. And uh, what I read today uh, from Ahlul Bayt's news agency, uh, that his view, there is other uh, scholars that have that has the same view. And uh, they are uh, Hussein Nuri Hamadani, Ja'far Subhani, and Safi Gulpaigani. But this fatwa from Makarim Shirazi, it's based on uh, the first movie that was made that they had to remake. So it's a fatwa for the movie Yomul Adab, the day the movie we spoke about before. Uh, so it's not related to this movie, The Lady of Heaven. So I don't know why people is bringing this fatwa up uh, right now, and even people who's not who are not even his followers or muqallidin. They're just bringing him up. Some of them don't know anything about him even or never read one of his books, but they're still bringing him up. I don't know what the point is uh, for bringing up a fatwa that's talking about a completely different movie. Now, coming back to the trailer, I know we've kind of gone, gone, off, gone off in a little bit of a tangent. We've gone from one issue to another issue. Um, Said Fardos, I want to ask you about this parts of the trailer where they show um, actual faces. And I know there's people out there who definitely have a, a problem with that. I mean, I'm one of those people. I don't think it's um, suitable to uh, show the faces of certain personalities. But at the same time, there's certain individuals who have been portrayed as being black. For example, I, I don't know if any, anybody noticed this, but um, you can see that one of the characters who plays Umar is portrayed as a black person. Now, some people are using that as a um, as an escape goat to kind of not watch the movie or to criticize the movie or attack the movie or attack those behind the movie or even use that as an excuse to attack Shias and say, oh, look at you Shia people. You know, you're racist because you've portrayed Umar as being a black person. What's your thoughts about the whole thing about depicting people and, you know, Umar himself being portrayed as a black person? Thank you very much, uh, Sayyid Ali, for... for um Making this call, I think it's important. Um, before uh, answering your uh, questions, I think um, I wanted to also say something about why a movie about uh, Sayyid Fatima al Zahra, I think the main uh, thing is that um, it comes from the original name for this movie, which was Brother uh, Ali mentioned uh, Yom al Adab, and uh, which means uh, Day of Torture or Suffering. Um, which comes actually from a narration from Imam Sadaq. That narration also points out the importance of this event. I think that's why um, if we take that narration, for example, 
um, we see the importance of this issue. Um, uh, the uh, narration says actually it's a very long narration. For, uh, Imam Sadiq al-Islam talks to his companion Mufaddal ibn Omar and um, uh, talks about how um, how great of a suffering and um, uh, disaster was the uh, uh, Karbala, the event in uh, events that happened in Karbala and the killing of the uh, family of the Prophet and. Uh, their, their companions. Um, and Imam Sadiq al-Islam says in that narration that um, even though that was uh, a great suffering, uh, which is cannot be compared with anything, but the original day of suffering or day of torture or Yawm al-Adab was the day that this door uh, was burnt and um, this this incident of the door happened. Um, attack on the door of uh, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. So that's, that narration also uh, shows the signific uh, significance of this um, this um, issue. I think um, I, the intention. I, I uh, pretty, I'm pretty sure that the intention was also this to give focus to the, to that matter, because this this day is called by Ahlul Bayt Salam themselves as the original day of uh, that started every other suffering originated from that day uh, on. So. Um, the issue is also that, um, as brothers also mentioned, that for example, the Sunni narrative about about uh, this period of of, of um, Islam, this early period, is a kind of not a full picture, but um, you have a, a puzzle with, with some pieces, and the other pieces are just blank, and. Um, you have to kind of um, refer to or. Um, fill those those gaps also with a with a um, narrative that the Shia usually bring because the Shia do not our sources for example they do not hide these things so they are um, mentioned or discussed in in uh, great details. Um, um, the Sunni version is has been that from a very early time uh, there is called the entire. Um, um, methodology was that uh, to hide these matters, this, these early disputes in Islam, these early divisions um, and uh, disputes, especially between the companions of the Prophet, uh, should not be discussed, should be uh, destroyed. And um, that's why we, we get those just those pieces in, in their books um, and not a full picture most of the time. So this is a great opportunity, I think, to to kind of um, make a make a great uh, um, move by uh, giving people really Muslims and non-Muslims a full picture of what happened. We can, of of course, after the film is issued, uh, discuss about what is. Um, what is correct and what what cannot be. Um, this is a matter after uh, the movie is is released. I think um, we can discuss. But for now, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of just see what 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 the other side is thinking. Um, but the movie, uh, as we saw in the, in the trailer, the movie contains also a very other important documented um, events like, for example, if you could name the event of Al-Ghadir that every, all Muslims agree upon that it happened and uh, they're, they're just um, not in agreement about the meaning what what uh, was meant there. But the event itself and what the Prophet said, if uh, all Muslims agree upon that one. Or the other things, also controversial uh, um, events like the event that I saw a very short thing that I recognized as the Laylatul Aqaba. And this incident, for example, is greatly um, documented. Uh, in our books, it's completely uh, mentioned with names and stuff and who those 14, 50 people were. But in Sunni books, for example, in Sayyid Muslim, we, we see that there were 15 people who participated in this in this plot and they wanted to assassinate the Prophet. Look at the significance of this, and this is authentically um, uh, uh, documented in Shia and Sunni sources. So it's very important um, uh, event that happened, and most most Muslims might have never heard the, the, uh, the, of of this incident because 
there were no men, uh, the, uh, this, at least in the Sunni version, there's no men, uh, names mentioned. So you could fill in the, the names, for example, who the, these people were, but by uh, referring to secondary sources and so on, or Shia sources. But um, this, for example, shows also um, uh, one of those those controversial, uh, for example, events. These events, they, they need to come to the uh, attention of Muslims and this ideology that um, we should um, whitewash and hide these these incidents in the earlier Islam, this needs to end. I think it's a, this movie uh, would be a great step, a great start to to kind of um, uh, open up these these issues. Another uh, thing that I saw in the movie is, for example, this um, event that um, known as uh, Hadith al Kisa. Prophet gathered his family, these five people, um, his daughter, two grandsons, and Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, under his cloak and said that this is my family. These are the purified ones. These are um, my close ones. And um, recites and this verse of Quran, the 33, uh, 33 uh, has been revealed about this and stuff like this. Um, like the other thing is important central event, uh, Saqifa, which is after the uh, martyrdom of the Prophet, and um, also what happened in Saqifa, for example, and the, um, the things around it. So I guess these these events, um, their connections with each other, and the, the kind of flow of what really happened in these in these crucial times. Um, it's very important, I think, and, uh, and my expectation is that these are in, um, in uh, discussed or, or shown uh, in the movie. And the other issue is that all these these matters are discussed in our books. So they are documented in our books, and these books are available nowadays through internet with a one click. So they already know these stuff. These extremists, they already know, know our books. They already know these these incidents. They already know what we think of these individuals. So nothing nothing is hidden from them. So the okay, only okay. thing is that they, okay, well, but, these will be new for the for the common people, for the common oh, Sunni people, okay. and, and maybe for most of the Shia also. Okay. So so what type of reaction would that cause then? I I think of course for. for Every every person, when you are grown grown up with a with a certain image of of Islam and and certain figures, it's very hard to to digest a new completely new new understanding of those pe- people, those individuals that you thought were very positive, very holy personalities, and suddenly you 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 get a completely new interpretation or completely new. Uh, uh, picture of those people, so it's uh, of course it's, it's difficult, um, but I think th- um, and I think the other brothers also agree that most of most of human beings, most of Muslims, they are good people, um, uh, whether Sunni, Shia, they they just normal people. They they live the, their lives. They um, want to do good. They want to to um, live in good in this world and also after afterwards. So. Um, this is what they want. Um, uh, so I expect that if they're ex- uh, they're ex- extremists, they, they will always be that. So uh, it doesn't need a movie. They they can um, download the book uh, provoked by a a scholars of there another extremist to that gather uh, usually for for such uh, actions. They uh, they. Um, so to speak, touch the emotions of these these listeners, and they bring them to to do st- certain acts like bombing, like killing, like whatever. So this is something that ha- that that is just now as also uh, something common among um, um, in our uh, amongst Muslims. So we experience it daily, monthly. You hear it in the news all the so time. Essenti- so essentially, what you're saying is there's nothing new there. If they wanted this type of information. Is ready, they're readily readily accessible accessible to them um, uh, on the social media. Um, but I just want to emphasize the just the, just yeah the extent of this movie would be would be greater because it's easier for 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 also normal people to access. Yeah, and um, because most of the people do not read uh, much, but um, 
I, I was talking about the extremists. They already do that. So they already extract okay, fine, our books, fine. Stu- no these, problem. These documents, no, and then no, 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 no problem. That's fine. But but still, in terms of the commoner, and, and I, I will ask this question to Brother Kaleem as well. Like, how do you think Sunnis will deal with this? The general uh, Sunni masses. But before I do, I just want you to uh, conclude on that point. Uh, one of my previous, which I mentioned earlier, in terms of depiction of showing faces now this is something which again is something which is a bit controversial people have the concerns are they going to show their faces are they not going to show their faces why are certain characteristics portrayed as being a certain ethnic background your thoughts yeah i think that the depiction of the holy figures the prophet and and his family this um i think this is um the the sunni thought we don't have a, a, a clear nas about this, that this is Aram, so, um, uh, so to speak. So this is something that nor Sunnis, nor, uh, neither we um, have some, some, a clear cut, so to speak, verdict about this from the Quran or the Sunnah. So this is something that the scholars say that because most of the time picturing, depicting a, 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 the personality or the face um, of uh, the prophet um, could ca- kind of create a, um, uh, how to say, a mockery or degrade from his status and stuff like that, which are this kind of secondary verdicts. And these secondary verdicts, they, they kind of um, base these fatwas, usually the Sunnis, uh, upon these, these uh, things that if this image creates a kind of negative picture of the prophet then yeah that's that's a pro- problem that that's not allowed yeah because um, i because i have seen depiction well i've seen actual characters um like for example the the prophet yusuf lay islam series there's actually a character portrayed there you know um and they, they've shown it but as you as you as you've mentioned right now that there is a, a difference of opinion amongst the scholars some f- thinks it's fine it's permissible uh, and they do so as long as the certain character is not being disrespected yes it's also uh, among sunnis i think they, they have also these, have these, these differences yes yeah yeah uh, and their, their sex their schools yeah. is also different yeah. uh um they have different opinions of course about and at the same time we'd have to, you know at, at the same time obviously those who are behind this production they're off they're off the view that there's absolutely you know there's obviously nothing wrong with that which is fine coming back to um certain characters as, as being as being portrayed as being black yes um i think uh, uh the stance of 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 um, shia is is clear about the the racism and the colors of of peoples it's something that that's mentioned in Quran and and also the hadith. This this is something, nothing is special to degrade a person based on based on this color of the skin. So um, that's one thing. Another thing is that um, the depiction of certain figures like Omar, uh, Abu Bakr, and also I think I heard also Aisha was uh, a, 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 the actress was kind of a black, from the black. Um, uh, uh, actresses, for uh, so to speak, but um, yeah, these are also historical historical uh, facts. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, read some some of these references, Sunni references that uh, um, kind of show how Omar looked. For example, the very first thing is that the the both um, uh, uh, subtypes of Quraysh, which is Banu Adi and uh, the um, uh, Bani Tim, they, they, they one of Bani Adi is, is those um, that Omar belongs to this subtribe, um, and uh, Bani Tim is the the tribe that Abu Bakr uh, belongs to. Uh, so. About um, these two uh, subtribes, the, it's mentioned that they have they, they were very mixed with the slaves. So they they were bu- buying slaves from Ethiopia, um, uh, Abasha or Abyssinia, um, called uh, in the past, which is current Ethiopia and Somali. Um, so they used to bring slaves uh, from 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 those countries and. Uh, then um, slowly they kind of uh, merged them into their tribes. Um, and that's why they were very mixed uh, sub-tribes of Quraysh. Uh, so 
um, for example, about Omar in, in specific terms. Uh, it's mentioned, for example, by um, in the book Al Muhabbar, and um, in this book is a very early book from uh, uh, authored by Abu Jafar Muhammad ibn Habib Al Baghdadi, who was con contemporary to Ahmad ibn Hanbal, for example, died to, um, in the year 245 uh, Hijri. And in this book, Al Muhabbar, page 306, he says, mentions the, those of the Quraysh which were um, sons of the um, black uh, or Abyssinian uh, slaves. And among them, for example, he mentions the second person, Nafil ibn Abdul uh, Uzza. And Nafil is, um, is the grandfather of Omar, for example. So his mother was an uh, Abyssinian. It was a woman from uh, from Ethiopia or Somali, uh, which is called nowadays. Also, the uh, um, um, who, whose name is known as Sahak, uh, as um, this author also mentions, and also he mentions Al Khattab, uh, the, which is son or father of uh, Omar, and um, his mother was also a um, Abyssinian slave. Um, and um, this author says that his uh, her name was Hayya, and she was also a slave, for uh, so to speak. And mentions some some um, things like people calling calling him uh, son of black woman and stuff like that, which is not uh, our thing. Uh, I just wanted to mention that um, it's historical that that he has he had a black uh, complexion. Um, also, uh, before I go on about his skin color, for example, also this author mentions him, uh, Omar, among the the people of Ashraf or the noble of Quraysh and other uh, Arab tribes who had a uh, 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 eyes were crossed or um, not crossed. I don't know what what the word in English would be for that. It was cross -eyed. In Arabic. It says yeah. In Arabic, it says ahwal, which could be crossed really, but also sometimes one eye could be, for example, um, uh, lazy. Not, lazy, not not uh, in the um, not both eyes, so to speak, uh, are in in co uh, correlation. So. Um, uh, mentions also this about Omar, for example, this author, and um, also the the Sunni scholars. They, the uh, those who have written biographies of the companions of the Prophet, like um, oh, Ibn Abdul Barin al Istiab, fi Ma'arifat al Ashab. He mentions, for example, that Omar was was kana Adam shadidul adma. Adam means a very dark skinned, Shadid uh, al which means intensely dark. Adim, Adam or Adim um, is an Arabic word which comes from uh, from the uh, word, um, it act actually refers to the mud in the earth. Also, and the name Adam, Adam alayhi salam, is also comes from this because his clay was made from this dark mud of the earth. And that's why his name is Adam. And the, in Arabic, they say Adam alone, which means uh, very dark skin. So uh, Abd Ibn Abdul Barmish mentions that he was in, Omar was intensely shadidul admin, intensely dark, tawalan, which means very tall, kathul uh, lehya, which means he had a very big uh, um, beard, aslah, uh, which means bald. Um, Aksar Yasser, and which means he was uh, left-handed and so on, and used to dye his uh, dye his beard also with henna, which is this kind of orange uh, color that uh, they they uh, take. I think it, it's common nowadays in Pakistan and some some other Arab countries as well. And uh, um, he mentions also that Waqidis. Uh, Historian uh, known as Waqidi, I think Said Ali, <laughs> you know him very good. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you've done a lot of stuff with him. So <laughs> he mentions this guy, um, Al Waqidi, that Al Waqidi says, no, this is not true. Um, Omar was very white, very white actually. 
and uh, his blackness was maybe in these narrations that they say he was black it could, it could refer to a uh, to the year uh, to a specific year which was very cold and in that year umar used to eat a lot of uh, olives so he used to eat a lot of olives that's why his skin color became very dark so we just and ibn abdul bar which says that uh, um um this is, is this is not an accept, acceptable this is absurd claim to to say that uh, um, the olives can can make your your skin color so dark this so I, so so ironically ibn abdul bar corrected a shia who was who was depicting a, <laughs> a, a better yeah. image of umar yeah he says wahaza munkarun min al this this claim is very absurd that the olives make, makes your your skin color very dark this is the, the well at least at, at least ibn abdul bar was a, a bit more honest uh, yeah he that. says wa asahu wa asahu ma fi hadha al bab wallahu a'lam hadith sufyan sufyan thawri an as ibn bahdala an zabn zarbna habish qala ra'ayt umara shadid al adma and in, he says that the more authentic or the more correct um, report is that the narration uh, that Sufyan al-Sawri from uh, Asim from Zarr ibn Habish narrates who says that I saw Umar and he was intensely dark, intensely, Shadid al-Atma, intensely black, so to speak. And this is also uh, confirmed by uh, al Zahabi and also Ibn Hajar. They, they mentioned the same thing that Ibn Abdul Bar mentions and they um, do not comment on it. So admit they are admitting to this to this opinion um and dismiss the 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 statement of al-baqidi baqidi actually narrates a narration through his chain to ibn umar the son of umar who says no uh, says kind of the same thing that his um skin color is due to one year it was in this one year that he used a lot of olives and stuff like that um but um also ibn umar for example mentions that in that same narration that um, uh, ibn umar says that our dark skin does not come my f- come from my father my dark skin and and all the sons of umar or the children of umar they are dark co- uh, colored because uh, because of our uncles uh, we are dark because of our mother's side not our father's side in any ways this is something that the sunni historians sunni scholars like um, ibn abdul bar ibn athir and so on they do not accept that and say that also ibn abdul bar mentions and other scholars that the majority of scholars um say that he was um very dark yes uh, of course the um uh, the a person having a, a darker skin is does not make any problem so i don't uh, i think it's bec- it comes because of so, so black people in our time they are very oppressed and they don't want to um these negative figures uh, to kind of um uh, bring them more for example um uh, fingers uh, towards them so that's why i think it's sensitive for for some black brothers and sisters maybe but um i just wanted to mention that this is historic so this is this has nothing to do with the racism and stuff like that um so they these are sunni historians that say they say the same thing that he was a dark skin just it's just um, a matter of i don't know why the, in this in this series that the uh, sunnis did um they depict him as a very um white man for example and um they took i think in this case from waqidi so <laughs> yeah, they, they took uh, they they accepted a shia narrative but um just wrapping up on your point um it's a, you know as as you rightly mentioned there's not a big issue even if you know uh if even if a person is black complexion yes certain, yes and the certain, same thing also mentioned and as, as uh, about abu bakr also and also aisha so it's not not uh, it's the same thing i think i heard also that aisha is also has been played by a black woman but black actor, actress but i'm not sure because i no, didn't see it in well, the, in the trailer from what i know and what i've heard say, uh, bibi fizar who for us is a very important uh, personality um 
she is portrayed as a black person in this yes so, also bilal as as you mentioned it, yeah. this is nothing so it's not so one sided it's just because the the authors i think they wanted to be factual and historically uh, correct that's yeah. why the, these figures have been I, I think there's an element of i think i think i think there's an element of racism as well unfortunately i think when when it comes to um, certain arab people uh if they know that a, a black person is uh you know a person from black ethnic background is being portrayed as umar that becomes problematic as well so i think there's a certain degree of uh, yes i think the, the, the it's a the, bit of sense, sense mm-hmm. sensitive for for uh for uh, some people i think but i don't think the the uh this film this film's aim was to just um use it as a as a race um as a as a means to to uh, practice racism i think Attack, this is, yeah, uh, yeah this is very absurd yeah i think um it's just historical facts so it mm. has nothing to do so, with the racism i think can i just add a point um about this whole black and racism bit uh it goes to show the mentality of the people who are making these claims of racism that you know how did they actually conclude that a dark person is going to be evil like what i i, th- I think there's the problem is with those people calling it racism rather than the movie actually being racist or anything of that nature do you get my point yeah yeah yes. absolutely i think that this was brought up i uh, correct me if i'm wrong i said ali that this was brought up by some black brothers, brothers and sisters that they were not so yeah there there was i think there were some concerns i mean i yeah, yeah. got contacted by some brothers and they were like yeah i uh, think they they shouldn't worry about that one because yeah. they're good positive per, uh, personalities also but like having Mrs. Fiza exactly. and Bilal yeah. and others Mehdad yeah. for example Ammar these are all black black uh, of of dark skin um In fact this even it's, yeah. it's just their tribes like like can you imagine a, like okay let's let's just reverse this whole thing can you imagine a white person like Omar being like a white caucasian looking person like you know it, that would actually make the story even look like factually inaccurate fake whatever you have to portray some sense of reality in it and you know they lived yes. in a desert so it's, having dark skin is normal you know you you'd have a tan if you lived in a desert So Baba Kleem, how do you think the Sunnis will react to this movie? 10 years ago, uh there was a movie released in Hollywood called The Da Vinci Code. And in that movie, they give a different perspective that the bloodline of Jesus still continues. You never saw the Christian world go crazy. You never saw them fight amongst each other. You never saw them cause bloodshed. That movie is still one of the best I think it's um uh One of the they say it's one of some say it's one of the best movies of all time. Um so at the end of the day a lot of discussion happened because of that movie. Oh okay so is Jesus really going to come back or is it going to be he's going to come through a bloodline is it going to be like so a lot of discussion happened. And even let's say for example it wasn't even true. At the end of the day it gave people something to think about and it gave people the opportunity to go research for themselves. and to see oh is there really another gospel that's out there the gospel of philip is there really the gospel of mary magdalene so that kind of opened up uh, it kind of expanded their horizons to research now this movie right it's coming from a historical fact based on isna ashari now even if it's from a certain let's say if it's very esoteric let's say if a lot of people don't even accept this view or some accept it or some don't or they these don't accept it so these don't accept it at the end of the day what is this movie doing it's going to give you the ability and the opportunity to go research for yourself and once you research for research for yourself you'll be open minded enough to research you'll make your own conclusions you'll make your own decisions now if this movie causes bloodshed or if this movie causes so much controversy that means that we have not grown as a roma that means that we still are following historical figures and not really following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family because this film okay i agree for many sentiments many people will be really really upset but at the end of the day who do we really follow it like who did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell us to follow so are we getting upset because we considered 
certain personalities infallible? And what is the truth at, at the end of the day? It's not about that Abu Bakr did this or Umar did this. It's about that the Prophet ﷺ left the, his family behind. So it, it's, it's the fact that the Prophet ﷺ left, like if you look at that trailer, it's talking about these things. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's mentioning these things, right? I mean, you can see these things that, that they've, you know, kind of put in that story that about Faddaq, about Khilafat, about the stuff that's going to take place. Why is it going to take place? The Prophet, I know this might be going a little bit off topic, but the Prophet ﷺ, in his lifetime, he told the Sahaba, don't go behind the mountain. Stay right here. Stay put. If you stay put, you, you have, just listen to what I say and stay put. They didn't listen. They actually started, you know, going towards all the treasure and stuff like that by not listening to the Prophet. And what actually ended up happening? The Prophet ﷺ broke his tooth. His holy tooth was Shaheed. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ saying, Man kuntu mawla fahazan ali yun mawla. Fahaza ali yun mawla. This is the family. This is my family. This is what you have to do. We didn't listen. Look what's happening to the Ummah right now. That, this movie, at the end of the day, it, okay, you might feel hurt. You might be angry. But at the end of the day, with an open mind, look at it. And if you don't look at it that way, that means that you haven't grown as a person. That means that your emotions and your, you haven't matured. Do you, think, person and, do, do you think that it could potentially lead to violence uh, in certain countries? And If it does lead to that, it means that those people had extreme elements inside them already. Right, so they, that, they were ticking time bomb. That's what you're trying to say. They were they ticking, was a ticking time bomb, though they had extreme elements inside them. That, this movie's not going to do that in the Western world. Here, that, none of that's going to happen. Now, if it happens in other parts of the world, like Iraq or other parts of the world, it's like, at the end of the day, okay, first of all, Let's say when this movie is not even released, have the Shias been spared in Pakistan? Have they been spared anywhere in the world? If they're not being killed, right? If the people that say they love the Alibate are not being killed, they're being killed intellectually every single day. They're being killed every single day by saying, you can't believe in this. You got to believe in this. These are the figures that you have to believe in. You have to believe in Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman. This is these and Mawia and Yazid. And this, this is what you have to believe in. It's being forced down your throat. Do you think it's better for the Shia community to hide this from the public domain? As in, of course, uh, I think Brother Abu Ali previously mentioned that, you know, th- when it comes to the lives of certain biographies of certain holy personalities, generally, you know, there's kind of like an agreement. Like, for example, when it comes to Muhammad Sayyid al-Islam, you know, you can talk about his life, you could talk about... Um, you know, Karbala, you can, you know, these type of things, even Sunnis can relate to that. They, they, they accept that, you know, Yazid was kind of behind, you know, he was, he was the mastermind behind what ultimately led to his martyrdom. But when it comes to the life of, say, the Fatima, is she, is she that type of personality where, you know, you could say that the events that surround her life and her, her, her martyrdom, <coughs> or how she passed away, whether you be a Sunni who chooses to accept that or not, do you think that this could um, make Sunnis despise Shias more for having this belief and, and bringing it out in the public public domain? Or do you think it's better for Shias to keep these things hidden and allow Sunnis to kind of, you know, uncover these things themselves? First, first of all, Hazrat Fatima is a role model to me to you, to every single generation that's going to come to the Day of Judgment. She's the ideal example for all of us to follow. Seriously, following Hazrat Fatima al Islam makes every woman into a better woman and it makes every man into a better man. It really does. And so the thing is, is that whatever she stood for, you know, even let's say, for example, the incident of Fadduk, for her to go and ask and for her rights and say, this belonged to me, what does that tell you? That teaches you about women's rights today, that women have rights, right? It teaches you for her to stand for justice, for her to speak the way that she spoke, to, to give the khutbahs the way she gave. It tells us that, that basically that we should be, um, we should stand up for what we believe in, right? So if it does cause that, I think that, like I said, that the Muslim world has not matured yet. Now, am I saying that, I'm, now I'm, as I'm saying again, that I haven't seen the movie. So am I accepting everything that's in the movie? I don't know yet. <laughs> the thing is that this hype has all happened just because of a trailer. People haven't even seen the movie yet. 
I my my thing is go see the movie. Okay, you hate Yasser, you hate Yasser Habib, and you know he said some things that you don't even I some of the stuff the way that he you know presented even I don't agree with it. But this movie it has nothing to do with Yasser Habib. Okay, fine, he's the mastermind behind it. Okay, yes, he made the actual movie like the storyline, but the facts that he presented in there. that comes from certain somewhere right it comes from certain literature it comes from historical facts so go see his point of view what he's saying the same way i'm going to go see the point of views of the sunnis the same way i'm going to see the point of view of the zaidis i'm going to even see the point of view of the ismailis and i'm going to see the point of view of whoever it is i'm going to see what they're saying right i mean nobody people should be a little bit open minded and they should you know and i'm not going to just watch it my kids are going to watch it I want my kids to see it. I want my kids to question tomorrow. I want my kids to research tomorrow. Did this really happen? Did it not happen? Did this is I mean, okay, so what uh, what extent do I believe in it? Am I going to believe in it as the Zaydis believe in it or the Ethnashri believe in it as the Sunnis believe in it? But how would you know if you haven't seen all sides? Right? At the end of the day, beliefs are just agreements we have with one another uh, with ourselves, right? And uh you can choose whatever you want to believe in. But if something is there, why just not with with a with an open mind with an open heart try to understand where this is all coming from and what what they're trying to say and what were the historical facts that's that's what i think so brother clean thank you very much for your contribution and thank you very much brothers uh, who have joined us on today's panel um i hope you the viewers enjoyed today's show there was actually a lot to cover there were so many things we didn't actually get to uh, touch on um, and and obviously there's certain areas that we could potentially just do hundreds of zoom shows just on certain certain subjects so brothers thank you very much for joining us today um this is uh sayde from beitakdir um inshallah we'll see you again soon assalamu alaikum